Taylor Swift is a link builder. There were rumors that she would get engaged. Our client said, let's give them a free wedding venue. And then we got them 50 links. That's digital PR. Managing multiple clients or large websites? Automate your SEO with Ali AI. Start your free trial now. Wix Studio, one end-to-end -end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. Thank you. Cool. Um, so, oh, there's me again. I'm Paul, um, so I've worked in organic media for about 15 years now. Over that time, I've spent the majority of it working on big e-com sites, the big brands, big retailers. With that, all of the issues, challenges uh, that comes with it, uh, hundreds of thousands of SKUs, thousands of PLPs, categories, subcategories, yada, yada. Um, very challenging, um, but very fulfilling as well. Journey further, a performance brand agency. We've been around about seven years now. We've got offices in um, the UK and the US, um, and we've won a few awards along the way. So why are we here? Um, the last 12 to 18 months, I think you'll all agree, has been a bit of a mad one. Um, not only has there, has there been so many changes in the landscape, in the technology, but that frequency of change has really increased and it's only set to increase as well. Um, so yeah, if change worries you, you should be worried because a lot more of it is going to happen. So some of the sort of like key stats, which I think sum up the situation that we're all in currently. Uh, budgets have been slashed 15% down year on year, so pretty sizable um, in the whole market. Meanwhile, CPCs have risen 40% over the last five years, and that's increased 13% in the last year alone. Um, so as you can see, there's no wonder why organic marketers, organic growth, SEO and digital PR is in huge demand right now. It's because PPC and paid media is getting much more difficult and is really starting to drive diminishing returns in a lot of spaces. But organic isn't the, isn't the sort of like golden ticket. It's not all rosy. Google is a business itself. It, it's, it's a behemoth and it needs to constantly, constantly grow its own revenues. As a result, the first page of Google drives less than 20% organic traffic than it did previous. And that's only set to continue with AI overviews. So just growing organic, let's do more SEO, isn't, isn't the sort of like magic answer it once was. And whilst all this has been going on, sort of last 18 months or so, we've had this real democratization of AI, of LLMs. You've got your chat GPT, Gemini, and everyone's using it as much as they can, trying to work out where it works, where it fits in their workflows. Uh, Fortune 500 companies, around 80 plus percent of them have used it and integrate AI into their workflows for, for good reason. And then as sort of Michelle was talking earlier, um, TikTok has become a discovery platform itself as well. It's become a real sort of search platform. Um, and we always talk about, oh, it's only Gen Z is on there. But as we've seen from some of the stats, it is growing across all demos and definitely something to keep an eye on. So all this change, we're in that sort of like uh, valley of doom, but we're coming out and there's a ton of opportunity to, to go along the way with, with every change. If you can move quickly, if you can move efficiently and you can do it at scale, then you can win and get the, get the jump on your competition. So Google CTR is declining um, and brands that are solely dependent on organic and solely dependent on Google um, are going to get stung. You're going to be clawing after the same terms of which if you stay in position one, position one is driving less traffic than it has done previously and it will only continue as the SERPs start to diversify further. We need to future-proof our brands, um, not just on Google, but across other ecosystems as well. So we can do this in two ways. First and foremost, let's maximize what we've already got, that existing headroom within Google. 
And then secondly, how can we diversify our different organic sources um, so we're not solely dependent on a single channel? First and foremost, let's look at our realistic headroom in your space. Um, SEO forecasts can be very challenging. They're always built on tons of assumptions and tons of different sort of uh, factors that are completely outside of your control. What I like to do is look short term. So where is that sort of initial striking distance within your categories? Um, and then if we were to build in say a plus two average rank increase and cross our different categories, segment that by page type, then we can see where the opportunity lies from a commercial point of view. That is much more sort of robust and much easier to sort of point to your um, stakeholders and point to your client and say, look, here's, the here's where the opportunity lies. Then identify the growth opportunity on, on the SERP. What other real estate is there to play in? Um, hands up if anyone has come across these product packs for unpaid listings on their searches. Yeah, a lot of you. Um, these were pretty much non-existent for this time last year. This is from Advanced Web Rankings uh, SERP Features Tool. They update this pretty much sort of like weekly. Um, I'll share a link around it later. Um, but what this allows you to do is drill down into different SERP features, into different categories, different, um, different regions. And this is one that has sort of been a real sort of sleeper over the sort of last six months, but is, is really picking up at the moment. And for unpaid product listings, for 71% of retail searches, this product pack is sitting on page one in a very prominent position. So Google is really trying to emulate that sort of more Amazon-like or more PLP-like experience. Because if you can rank in those top spots, you can drive traffic straight through to your PDPs. So we did this for one of our retail brands. Um, they had some issues with their merchant feed and their schema, which if you go into your Google search console and you see, oh, your schemas um, fails on uh, like 80% of PDPs, get that fixed. Otherwise, you won't be able to get in that product, product pack. And what we were able to do is you're essentially able to get two bags of the cherry. Not only do you rank organically in your like traditional blue link, but you jump into the product pack there as well. Um, and that is page one and they're going straight through to a PDP. So the conversion rate on that versus just landing on a PLP tends to be much higher too. So as a result, we were able to drive 23% of incremental traffic um, just through sort of fixing that schema um, and optimizing um, those PDP paid performance issues alone. Cool, so that's maximizing existing headroom. When we look to diversifying sort of our other organic sources, um, we need to look at where um, searches are taking place. So obviously people make tons of different searches in tons of different ways, depending on your journey, depending on your sort of like awareness, your triggers, et cetera, et cetera. The search journey is expanding. So here is a search term for gym outfit. So someone's looking for some gym gear, 60,500 monthly searches on Google, but that's only like a small slice of the pie. When you start to zoom out you can, and look at other platforms, you can really start to see very much in sort of similar vein to what Steve was saying. A lot of these searches take place elsewhere on other platforms, depending on what stage of the journey you are in. And it really is up to us now. Um, SEO isn't just changes on site. We're not just tweaking sort of title tags, improving page performance, interlinking, etc. This sits with, with search teams now uh, to be visible on the platforms that your audience aren't. Because if you don't, other brands or other influencers like Michelle will be. Cool. And then the other sort of one other big issue is shrinking demand. So what do you do if there's contracting demand in your in your category or in your area? We need to find where that growth sits within categories. Um, we built a tool called Pulse, which is basically a mashup of um, TikTok trend data, um, keyword planner data, and we scrape Google Trends data, which is a bit naughty, but on a daily basis, which gives us that live view of what's trending, what's exploding, um, what, what's 
um, on the sort of uh, slide and it allows us to uncover new trends, um, map seasonality, because oftentimes a lot of things are just cyclical. Um, and this allows us to better plan for content, create new PLPs, jump on trends a lot quicker than other, other competitors can. We see that live every day. But then also a lot of us here, we work in e-com, we work in retail. Um, We've got a huge base of products, huge number of SKUs, huge number of categories, et cetera. One of the big overlooked opportunities that a lot of brands and retailers don't capitalize on is just looking at different ways people already search for your product, but you, you're just not able to rank for them currently. So one way to do that, the classic way is to open up your facets, make them indexable um, and populate those new pages with content. We built this sort of like, we call it like facet finder, but ultimately what we look to do is find your brand's sweet spot. So say you sell 10,000 different products, right? Depending on the different variations, the different colors, the different sizes, there's tons of different ways you can search for those single products. And finding that brand's sweet spot is looking where there's sufficient search volume, you've got sufficient product in stock, and range and you've got the sort of functionality to actually spin those pages out but then what do you do we actually worked with a uh, interior and wallpaper brand um, and they had a really eclectic range they've got sort of and with wallpaper and different sort of um, paperings you might search for different combinations so black and gold for instance the way their site was set up was you could only choose one facet so you could only have a look at black wallpaper and then if you combined it with gold in the facet um, that wouldn't be indexable or accessible. So what we wanted to do was just blow these facets open, essentially adding around sort of 900 different um, indexable facets. But with that came, oh shit, we've got to create content for 900 different pages, which is a nightmare of a job if that's thrown to you, if you're the intern and you've got to spin all this content up. Um, and it would take a long, long, long time. Um, and before that point, if your competitors are much better, much faster at pulling that together, they're just gonna beat you straight out of the gate. So we looked at automate with AI, the mundane. So we built a custom GPT, fed it with brand guidelines, tone of voice, expert voices, give it a type prompt and criteria. And then, um, and then feed that through to, that should be a little human brain there to indicate we've got some level of human QA and sub editing. Um, and then we'll push that live. And the results were awesome. So this um, purple line is our clients. Um, and then the other lines are the other competitors in the space. The dotted dash is essentially where we push those indexable facets out. And the increase in visibility was massive, sort of doubled their organic visibility, because as you can imagine, the long tail of those searches, and they were just the key targets. Obviously for each, there's tons of variations off the back of it. They really start to pull. We're able to drive massive improvements um, from a non-brand um, category point of view. Another way we've been able to automate the mundane is through using ChatGPT vision. So AI can see now, which means it can do a lot more than just us feeding it prompts. So one thing I hate is when I'll see a really shit hot um, analyst doing a really mundane time sapping task. Cause I, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just mind, mind uh, numbing. That a lot of those tasks can be automated now. It's just understanding which ones can be. So for the PLP intro copy title tags meta description, even if you have a human craft those, the actual quality um, is never that good. That can be AI automated with and human sub edited with without sort of without any real impact to, to performance. What we look to do here is automate a couple of other audits, which we do it day in, day out. So one of them was um, the double EAT audit. So what we do is feed it with all the known criteria, as well as some of our own custom checks. 
And what this allows us to do is basically feed a list of URLs through to our um, tool. And it essentially spits out a really thorough, um, really strong EAT audit. Um, so massively sort of accelerates the speed that we're able to churn that type of quite sort of like time sapping, but really, really important activity out. So that was an example of B&Q. I don't know why we're all using B&Q examples, um, but just a, a way to audit and check um, a guide here. Um, and then again, yeah, we can have a spit out what that sort of um, top level um, audit looks like. So something that could or would have taken maybe like a day, day and a half to do properly, we can do in a matter of sort of like three minutes. And we can do that for hundreds of pages um, in no time at all. So moving on to smaller budgets, um, we're all currently being challenged to do with more with less. Um, and there are two ways to split out how, how we do um, more with less. Firstly, how do we make better use of a resource that we already have? Um, and then secondly, how can we better use spend budget we've got available? Um, so one way we've been able to um, better improve our resourcing is just spending time on the things that matter. Um, so we created this PIE prioritization framework um, which allows us to essentially take a huge sort of like quite comprehensive technical audit, but then map um, a sort of like revenue and traffic uplift figure off the back of the scoring system, which essentially weights um, what we should do and when. So we actually created this in tandem with um, one of the big national banks who were just like massively, massively um, sort of like hindered in terms of getting things through, tons of level of compliance, legal, et cetera. And as a result, a lot of the um, SEO tasks just got bumped to the, to the back of the queue, um, despite knowing how much um, sort of impact they could really have. What this allows us to do is map things out sort of month by month, what's going to make a difference and essentially sort of elevated and pushed the tech changes right to the front of the queue. Um, and then very quickly, combined search reporting, everyone here can do it. Just plug and mash together your Google search console and uh, Google ads data. So we did this and essentially what it allows us to do is build out a um, live dash. We can see what we're driving from a paid point of view, um, what we're driving from an organic point of view, but then we can build in different growth scenarios as well. So we can see actually where is the headroom in organic, where's the headroom in paid, um, and essentially just gives us a much more holistic view of, of um, search performance. So again, we can drill down into different campaigns, ad groups, pivot that out by organic ranking pages, etc. Um, and get that right down to sort of query level, um, revenue level, um, conversion level two. And then finally, we're all operating in increasingly competitive markets. What sort of got us from A to B doesn't necessarily get us from um, A to Z. So what we need to do is, again, really prioritize value over vanity. And that's where being relevant absolutely matters. Um, we need to make sure the players we make, the money we spend, the resource we spend counts. And that really is the key to maintaining and stealing market share. Um, so I won't quote the great John Moo who I've seen walking around today, um, but ultimately volume doesn't matter, relevancy matters. So let's not play the volume game. We've been talking about um, link relevancy um, since 2019 when we created Salient, um, which is a link measurement tool which allows us to essentially grade using NLU technology, the relevance of a link and the relevance of a link profile. So as a quick example, if you're ASOS, you're searching for women's trainers, a coupon site that doesn't link through to the uh, relevant PDP doesn't have that contextual copy on it around it and sits on a broad non-specialist coupon site domain gets rated only a 13 score here for relevancy. Meanwhile, 
um, on Glamour, a really strong topical piece of editorial that talks about the best women's trainers of the sort of season, has that contextual copy around it and links through to the relevant PDP. That is very highly relevant, that gets a 91 rating. So with that in mind, um, we were tasked by uh, Marks and Spencer to essentially increase their relevancy in their more sticky and challenging business units. You might think uh, Marks and Spencer, they're huge, they can rank for anything, but if you're creating or pushing into new categories, you don't have that level of category relevance. Um, to really compete because you're up against specialists, you might be up against different competitors altogether. Um, so with this in mind, we ran that uh, relevance um, gap analysis. We know exactly what type of content we needed to create. And we were able to um, get relevant links from highly authoritative sources, which again, um, compounds the power and the, the impact of those sorts of links on non-brand performance. We were able to increase um, relevance by 22%. Over that sort of period, we did that by acquiring 318 different um, links um, and then huge impact on um, non-brand keywords as a result too. This moved them from seventh in the market for those five business units right up to two in a period of 12 months. Um, and then in terms of hard metrics, it drove an additional 13% um, organic revenue, which for those were big numbers. So in summary, what we should do is always size up the realistic opportunity. Um, don't build out a huge forecast that's built on tons of assumptions um, because you're gonna just put a foot wrong straight out the gate. Understand what's realistic in that short to medium term. Take control of your resource and budget. That's what makes the difference. So if that's been spent or used in the wrong places, then um, it's not going to do anything. So identify the wastage in other channels, such as PPC. If they're spending 20% 20, uh, 20 of their budget on terms that don't uh, convert, we, we can use that. Find your brand sweet spot. And finally, relevance cuts through the noise. Look at metrics that drive value, not just drive vanity. Thank you. And then, if you want my deck, um, if you connect with me, this sounds really cheesy, what am I doing? Connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, and you can grab that as well as some links to different tools. Um, and if you want your free relevancy report for your brands, um, you can QR code that or again, just talk to me after this. Thank you. Monthly reporting, making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools. 